everyone, welcome back to the English Eating live stream. Thank you very much for joining and tuning in. Of course, I will be your host this evening, Callum from uh, English Eating. Uh, it's going to be, yeah, uh, whilst uh, we are in the midst of Christmas, not exactly a festive and cheery uh, one today, as the problems still continue with firearms licensing here within the UK. But before we get into that, an important reminder to make sure you like the, scre the stream. It does make a huge difference to the algorithms of YouTube in getting this out to people, attracting new people into our sport and making our sport a more robust and secure prospect for uh, the future and if you enjoy these streams and if you enjoy the other videos on the channel then hit the subscribe button and join us for more in the future we do this every single thursday half 7 p.m you yeah half 7 p.m uk time uh, and of course this is an interactive stream so if you are watching live again thanks for joining and put your thoughts, any questions that you may have on anything shooting related or or otherwise, or uh, any topics you want us to touch uh, upon. So yeah, I hope you um, have all had a great week and are looking forward to the weekend ahead. Of course, uh, at the time of this going live, we are only two days away from Christmas, so I'm sure, you know, mate, well, hopefully for some of you out there, there will be some gun-shaped presents underneath the tree. So, um, the truth junkie, I don't know, I might not like what you have to say. Not a lot of people do, including Hampshire Firearms Licensing. And on that point, uh, moving, moving on into the main topic, of course, the past few weeks have been very heavily involved around various departments doing some pretty incredible things or making some pretty incredible uh, decisions. Um, Mr. E30, Merry Christmas to yourself. Thank you very much. Appreciate your support uh, of the channel. Uh, so this all started, of course, with the Plymouth shooting, Devon and Cornwall having to do various investigations. Then we had the uh, impl implementation of this new statutory guidance for firearms licensing departments, basically the guidance from which they will issue a certificate. North Yorkshire Firearms Licensing Department decided that whilst they had well over two years of notice of this new statutory guidance coming in, they weren't ready for it and they needed to completely shut up shop. Now, last week, we talked about Hampshire having changed their um, sort of spiel before you go on to do your application online to say that they were not currently doing initial grants. Now it's gone sort of one step further. There has been an official statement released by Hampshire Firearms Licensing. And for any of you that don't understand how it works here uh, in the UK in terms of firearms licensing departments, the firearms licensing department are within the police. It is a police department and police process. And the UK is divided up into counties. So unfortunately for myself, uh, I am in the county of Hampshire. Uh, obviously there's like North Yorkshire, you have you know, Wiltshire, Sus you know, East Sussex, I think it is, um, or West Sussex, whatever, um, Surrey, all, all these different counties. And within each county and within each county's police department, there will be a county-wide national, well, sorry, a county-wide firearms licensing department. The issue with this is that you don't get much um, continuity between all of the, the different counties as they love to have their own sort of unique processes and interpretation of the law. Um, Truth Junkie, very much appreciate it. Uh, again, your your support. I'm not on the Christmas Mead um, or even a beer chaser. I've, I've gone a little bit upmarket. I, I am on the bubbly tonight. Um, my my fiance has a friend round, so I was having a little bit of, uh, of food and chit chat before we started the stream and I thought it probably wasn't best to, to get a couple of these in before the stream because then all hell breaks loose. So I'm going to have this uh, this other glass during the stream with you guys and, and sip and enjoy. Uh, but yeah, again, appreciate the, the support guys of, uh, of the channel and of course a Merry Christmas. So yeah, so Hampshire Firearms Licensing Department, the Firearms Licensing Department, 
that I'm under that is responsible for issuing, renewing, and pretty much seeing everything over or, or, or conducting all firearms needs within uh, Hampshire, uh, the county of Hampshire, have now stopped initial grants. They do have, fortunately, some sort of caveat that if it's for a professional or vocational reason, they will, they don't say that they will process your application. They say they, they will try and help. But I'll bring up the statement from them. So this is actually taken off of somebody posted. And there's a lot more to this uh, that, that we're going to get onto, including GPs, because it seems to really come from the GPs, all of this. Uh, so, th so this is it. The first interesting thing to, to really note is customers. Um, it is funny that they, they seem to think of us as, as customers because we don't really seem to get much customer satisfaction up and down the country, uh, but they are, they're blaming COVID once again. Hampshire was one of the firearms licensing departments that previously shut down o over the first lockdown. And even back then, whilst no one really knew what was going on. No one really knew the severity of things, where things were going to go, whether the world was going to end. Uh, it, it was. It still seemed to be a bit odd because other firearms licensing departments continued to function. Uh, and they're saying that they're doing this to support the NHS, um, to support the, the booster program because of the Omicron variant, uh, and that they don't feel it would be particularly... Um, you know, particularly helpful for firearms licensing officers or, or firearm inquiry officers to be going into people's houses because it could spread it. Also, it puts their staff at risk. It puts the the public um, at risk, and and, and and all of this, right? So that's their uh, official line, and hopefully, it's been on the screen enough um, that you can you you could have had a chance to to read it. Um, what a load of bollocks! Like, like honestly, we've had I've had various discussions with people online, and and one person going as far to say as you know how many people need to die for you to be able to continue doing your 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 hobby? What an absolute load of horseshit! Other firearms licensing departments have been able to do virtual interviews, right? They've been able to process grants throughout the pandemic, throughout the entirety of of COVID. Why are certain firearms licensing departments now shutting up shop? Or Hampshire is, I believe, the only one at the moment to have come out and said, no, 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 we're, we're not doing it. Um, being a civil service department, whilst they are under the police, they are not police officers themselves. Um, they, they are um, civvies, effectively. They are civil servants. What this just stinks of completely is, actually, we probably want a few extra weeks holiday it's a firearms licensing department that is well known to be anti-firearms. The previous head of the firearms department went and worked for Nabus and was actually part of the team that headed up the banning of the Mars and lever release and tried to also get 50 cal bans. This is a very anti-firearm firearm licensing department. And we've talked about previously the conflict of interest of having people that seemingly don't want to be giving out certificates um, responsible for giving out the certificates and it seems like a very easy excuse not to process people's certificates um, and and it gets even worse from there that not only are there mechanisms for them to be able to continue processing these certificates without risking anybody because last I knew of, of COVID, it didn't transmit over a Wi-Fi connection. We have Zoom, we have Skype, you have the bloody telephone. And this is also a department that I know previously from, from friends that have applied and, and colleagues, that they have issued certificates without any interview. Um, just through contact on, uh, on the phone and through email, they have issued firearm and shotgun certificates. So why now? It just seems like an absolute excuse. This close to, to Christmas, a few extra weeks for them to put their feet up, you know, not, not do any more applications and, and just have an, ex an extended Christmas break. Meanwhile, people, these customers that have paid their hard-earned cash in getting a certificate, not only have they just you know, they're not going to process these certificates. They've actually reset the clock for 
these uh, for a number of applications. I'm not going to show you, it, these are all within private groups, so I'm not going to show um, any of the, the people that have said this, but uh, within the Kentucky Firearms Club uh, private group, and you do only have to, don't go and all try and join it because you have to be a KFC member, there have been a number of members that have said that they have now received full refunds. There was one person, I think they had been waiting 12 months, one uh, waiting three months, and, and there was somebody else who was sort of in between, uh, I think it was about six or eight months. They've been refunded and they've had their application returned. So when they come to do when they reopen, when they decided that they've had enough Christmas holiday, it's not a case of, well, everyone's in, in line, they're just going to continue processing them. These people are going to have to go and reapply. And furthermore, there was another member that has confirmed with a bit of back back and forth with Hampshire Firearms Licensing um, that there's going to be no queue jumping, there's going to be no priority given to those that have already waited 3, 6, 12 months. Um, it's to the back of the queue with you, which is absolutely disgusting. Uh, they refer to us as customers, and then this is the sort of service they give. So, you know, a department that is already taking 12, 18 months to issue some people's initial grants, there's gonna be some people, like, like you know, somebody that's waited 12 months already, they've had the clock reset, they're gonna to have to join the back of the queue again, and what, wait another 12 to 18 months on top of the 12 months that they've already waited. It's just absolutely abysmal. And to use this excuse of COVID, yes, you know, people dying, people um, having their, their health, potential health put at risk, being out there and about, I can completely understand. It's a very serious matter. The fact that they won't even entertain doing any work. FEOs can quite easily do the, the bulk of these application processes at home they can work from home and do remote interviews whilst the new guidance and this is statutory guidance does explicitly say that home visits must be uh, carried out first of all it is still guidance right it's to guide them if they feel that they can achieve the same goal doing something you know slightly differently given the unprecedented circumstances that we find ourselves in it's guidance they are and regularly do chop and change and bend and and swive and whatever um to to whatever they want uh, to do so so they can continue to do that even if they do physically uh, let's say to the letter of the law physically need to go into somebody's house and again i do understand that going into somebody's home is going to tell a lot of uh, about somebody also there's the security arrangements to make sure that the safe has been installed that um, you know various security measures are in place and that the firearms are going to be safe and secure and i understand that all needs to be done but why can't the long bit of the home visit be conducted why can't they do the interview why can't they go and do all of the necessary checks why can't they verify the gp certificate why can't they sit down and do a virtual interview interview which literally means when they reopen as a department all their, the the feos can effectively hand deliver the certificates bearing well on on the proviso that when they go around this person's house everything is tip top all the security arrangements are there it turns what would ordinarily be say an hour or hour and a half visit into a 10 15 me, uh, 10 to 15 minute visit Meaning that instead of an FEO being able to do two or three interviews in a day, which, you know, at the hour, hour and a half, plus the travel, obviously, they would be able to just knock people through. You know, they'd be able to start doing five, six, seven, eight people in a day, um, ticking them off and handing them their certificates. It just seems absolutely lazy to completely shut up shop and a very poor excuse of, of why, to, why to do it. And this whole line of, you know, to support the the NHS. I didn't know that the uh, FEOs were medically trained. Well, like, what, are they gonna go and volunteer and start giving people the boosters? Like, really, what does shutting down an, uh, a firearms licensing department actually achieve? How does that re alleviate pressure on the NHS as long as the FEOs are, say, working from home or not going to their office? Again, that I can understand. 
but you know many businesses whole businesses have had to change their entire structure um, very very quickly to survive within the p private sector and a lot of them have done so very very well are now thriving um, compared to pre-covid and it's just civil civil servants you know a, a public department public sector department nah we're still going to get paid it's firearms so no one's going to really come after us if anybody complains about it well their their application is going to go to the back of the queue um and as we well know you know mps can do very little to to influence them or really put pressure on them the in, independent and uh, complaints um departments can't really do much they they don't want to get involved with firearms and it's really not their remit so they are just you know a law to themselves um again it's it's utterly disgusting. I can see a lot of other uh, firearms licensing departments following this trend and uh, using this as an excuse. And, and meanwhile, you've got the, the Prime Minister, and whilst I wouldn't necessarily say he's the maybe best judge of things at times, um, but you're saying, you know, this is a really mild thing. It's basically just a cold. We're not going to shut down the entire country. Hampshire just seemed to be taking a, a very uh, disproportionate approach into shutting up shop which which of course gives them um an a an extended christmas which i think is ultimately what they want and the silver lining is well they're gonna not be processing applications and of course there's going to be a massive backlog and a, and a massive backlog works for them because it's going to slow down the department and it again gives an excuse for why they're not processing applications why people's uh, applications are taking so long they go oh, well you know we had the covid backlog we still haven't recovered from the previous backlog. We, we still haven't got, you know, licenses being issued in the same sort of time. And it's just going to get worse and worse. And, and now people, you know, they didn't even do that last time. You know, last time they shut up shop and uh, over the, the first lockdown, at least they kept people in there in the queue. At least there was some sort of chronological order, you know, first come, first served to kick people to the back. Like, again, another, you, you could argue that they're doing that to put people off applying. If you've already waited 12 months and now you've been kicked to the back of the queue, how many people are just gonna go, I can't be asked with this, I'm not gonna get a certificate, right? And and you can't do anything. You can't, you can't complain about them, you can't push them, um, and yet they're allowed to continue operating with this. Like no private business would get away with doing this. But of course, what can you do? You have to go to, through them, you have to use them. Um, and you know you're you you really are sort of under their under their thumb. So um, so yeah, that that's really what's going on with Hampshire. It's only going to sort of get worse, and I think going to spread once other firearms licensing departments see that Hampshire is doing this, they're going to jump on that. Well, if one is doing that, then we can get away with doing that, and and so on and so forth. But it just seems so funny that you have someone like North Yorkshire. That's like, oh no, it's the new guidance is the reason we have to stop issuing them. And Hampshire's like, oh no, it's COVID. It was like, you know, come on guys, at least, again, like whilst you, you seem to all be pretty incoherent in following the guidance to a T, um, you know, and have any sort of consistency across the country, at least get some consistency on your excuses of why you're not processing applications. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think all about that. Don't forget as well, like and subscribe. It does make a difference. Um, see a lot, lot of people watching. Thanks for for joining, but not so many likes. So hit that like button. It does, um, it does really help. Uh, so I think some was somebody asking um, about what else they're going to process. Yeah, just to c clarify on that they are doing other services so like renewals um what was their actual verbatim so it it does it does say just initial grant so it doesn't explicitly say what else they're going to be doing like they're definitely going to be do, doing renewals that they absolutely have to do because if you know people's firearm certificates run out uh but Basically, the way that it works is, you know, our, our firearm certificates are valid for five years. After that five-year period, once they expire, if you don't have a new certificate and it expires and you are 
in possession of, of all these guns, um, you are in illegal possession of those guns. You're, you're basically the authority for you to possess those guns has expired. You can no longer you know, lawfully be in possession of those guns. So the, the police can't allow that to happen. So they're going to still have to allow um, renewals. And again, that sort of just makes it whilst it reduces the numbers, how are they going to do that without going to people's houses? Right, because they're probably going to do them virtually. Why can't they be doing virtual initial grants? I don't know. So, if you're in Hampshire and you need a renewal, they're still doing those. In terms of variations, I could imagine very much that they're going to say, you know, no and wait, unless it's a very simple variation, like a one for one variation, or, you know, you're asking for, I don't know, um, you know, you, you want to go from a, a 223 to a 243 or, or something like that you know well or, or you want to add on you want want to add on you know you've already got a 308 and you want to add on a 223 that sort of stuff they're probably gonna process but i wouldn't hold your breath uh david kent has actually stopped new applications from being submitted but luckily i got uh, I, I sent my application about a month ago before this happened uh, so that's um well that's certainly good news for you obviously anybody in in hampshire like again they're not even doing it that way that you know that would be bad enough you know no we're not accepting anymore right that that you well again it's still utterly shit and a poor excuse but that you could sort of stomach but have seeing people have their applications returned and it confirmed that they're going to have to go back to the queue like like what are they doing do you think that the recent firearms confiscation based on a complaint could be connected to the gun trader leak that's a very uh, interesting um sort of hypothesis um or or theory uh no um i mean it's possible so, so what you're saying that the antis have got hold of that information, and they're just send you know they're sending, um, you know finding where someone lives, finding where the firearms licensing department, and just you know going through the list, sending off complaints. Um, it it is, it it is uh, possible. Uh, I do know, and and from first hand experience, certainly Hampshire firearms licensing department will take sort of anonymous complaints against somebody really into uh, account um, uh, in terms of assessing suitability without allowing any information you know well what's the complaint who's it from what's it regarding oh no we, we've just had a complaint well I'm, you know I'm sorry you could have had somebody said that you know I'm a mass murderer or I I parked my car shit you know I took up two spaces at Waitrose right it's it's like you're saying there's this complaint like I might be able to understand the severity and and why you seem to be taking it so seriously if you actually give me some more information. Um, <clears throat> I, I think they would have to have something more substantial rather than just an email from an auntie. First of all, if this is happening multiple times, um, and you know, there's um, you know, there's a sort of one email address. I mean, it could be a team of antis. It could be a fairly organised operation doing it. Although antis don't necessarily always seem to be um, you know, organised. From what I have seen with Field Sports Britain and the reporting that they've done on it, um, it does seem to be old events. Um, so there was one person that I think it was like five years previously. Um, they had had a, a complaint made against a. A, I think a then wife but currently an ex-wife um, and that was never that was never followed up on and I think there was a case where that um, or a person where like 10 years prior that they there was an alleged assault or something like that and that was never followed up on but these were the people did not know about the the issue the issue you know or, or the complaint it, it wasn't necessarily news to them they were just sort of almost scraping the barrel from events that happened five ten years prior um so i i don't think that is going to be the case but it was one of the things that you know people feared not well actually not that specific specific case what people feared was that the antis would target these people directly it would be a very sort of smart move on their part to try and get people's certificates taken away by uh, making fictitious uh, complaints really though 
it has you know based on like one random email or a phone call um it, it would have to be more substantial than that because like the person would have to give some details they'd probably have to make some sort of crime report um you know and and and, and all that and and then you can't mask yourself that well uh giving that sort of detail and, and making a you know sort of a crime report so I, I think that's that's unlikely um, o overall. Uh, Bob Callum, what are the odds that I will be successful in my FAC application here in uh, Warwickshire? I am a member of a rifle range and black powder club. I feel very concerned about this. To be honest, I don't know what Warwickshire is doing. Uh, it, it really is hit and miss up and down the, the country. As I've been saying, previously during lockdown and previously during covid there were firearms licensing departments that were business as usual pretty much apart from doing virtual sort of zoom calls for for interview so i don't know much about that that area and you know, how good they are you just have to be fingers crossed that they're still going to be uh, processing things the best thing probably to do or you know obviously probably broken up for christmas now but send them an email send them a, or, or give them a call um and and ask them and say look are you do you what's the situation are you going to be shutting down are you going to be uh continuing as um as usual to be to be fair like if you're asking about if you're going to be successful at some point yes if you're a full member of a home office approved club um you know if let's say you've got no criminal record yeah, and you've conducted yourself well and your your club supports your application i can't see any reason that you're you're not going to go and get a, a certificate when that is likely to be regardless of these departments that are carrying on and are continuing to operate there is still it's still not as quick and easy for them to operate the you know there's in terms of social distancing in terms of general operating now and and, and working things are very different things are a little slower maybe a little bit more arduous so i think everyone's going to see a delay certainly if we see another lockdown um you know place your bets on that no one really knows what's going to what's going to happen um my theory is that if there is a further lockdown an additional lockdown we won't see that until after new year's uh, i i don't think the current government will get away with locking people away um, during New Year's, given what has uh, come to light recently. But, you know, what's the likelihood of, of having a, a full lockdown in January? At the moment, I'm likely to say 50-50. There's, there's some people like Connors at Maglode as well. Um, he's convinced. He's absolutely convinced we are, we're having a lockdown. I don't know. Fifth, could be 50-50, but I think if we do, it will be after to New Year's. If we have another lockdown, then that will probably uh, hinder a lot of other departments. That really does give them the black and white justification to shut up shop. Because you can say, well, it's not an essential service for, for people that have a certificate for a hobby. Andrew sounds terrible can you contact your local way MP to complain uh, yes you can there's nothing stopping you from contacting your local MP um, from personal experience uh, there's not a lot they can do they they can apply pressure they can sort of you know phone up the the chief constable or, or even the firearms licensing department and go you know what the fuck are you playing at um, you know, get back to it but the MP doesn't have direct control over them. Um, they could raise it up in the the houses, um, the houses of parliament. They could raise it as uh, an issue. Unfortunately, firearms are never a public, uh, a popular topic. And to start as an MP, putting your neck out on the line for something that is continuously divisive or continuously, um, you know, it's you're only likely to lose votes in bringing that sort of issue up. Uh, at the end of the day, this is why it's so important to increase the number of shooters, to increase the number of certificate holders, because it politically it's a numbers game. If an MP at the moment looks at it and goes, well, there's 750,000 license uh, certificates in the UK. Some of them are, are sort of doubled up. So we sort of say in, in the 600 to 700,000 uh, certificate holders range, that's less than 1% of the population. Um 
the MP is just not going to worry about that. Less than 1%, they need to go after the 5, 10, 20% of the population to be able to um, be successful and to, to get re-elected. They, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that MPs are, are disingenuous to their uh, constituents. Th there's some that will be very passionate and go, you know, every constituent is as important as, as the next. And, and actually, if, if they present, prevent and uh, present an issue to me that just seems to be you know wrong and um say malpractice of a department or something um th regardless of the issue they will take it upon themselves to to help but it's usually politically a slippery slope for any mp and it never tends to to gain them votes and most M mps are, are only worried about getting re-elected Um, kick ass chick, uh, your message disappeared into oblivion. Then, um, Merry Christmas, Callum. All you want for Christmas is an FAC, but I ain't gonna be giving that, am I? You know, Hampshire, right? Like, I thought maybe last year I might have an FAC, but this year I, I still think they're just doing it for me. I think you know they they keep on getting really close to processing my uh, my application, they, they really don't have any other reason uh, not to uh, now. And, you know, they go, uh, well, we, we, uh, well, no, we're, we're stopping. We're stopping all grants. There we go. Um, funnily enough, and you can bet you after I say this, I'm going to get an email and, and my money back. But funnily enough, I haven't had my application re um, returned. <laughs> like, I don't know, maybe they shredded that one as soon as it came in and there's nothing to return. Um, and they've used they've used my uh, application feed for their you know Christmas drinks funds. Um, that would be interesting to know actually. I don't know if you could, that's something you could freedom of information uh, request whether they still had a Christmas party. I mean that would be a real kick in the balls, wouldn't it? No, we're not processing any grants because you know COVID and helping the NHS. Yeah, but we had a proper booze up. It was it was glorious. Uh, Callum 95, my um, county hasn't closed. Surely this would be a national decision and they all would close. If not, why can some just uh, choose to shut up shop at will? Because there's no consistency. Each county has its own way of operating, their own, their own sort of modus operandi, uh, as it were, their own agenda, um, for, for lack of a better word, and they do things how they want. They interpret the guidance how they want to. They operate how they want to. They make decisions as, as they want to. They are all independent from each other. Whilst they are they are technically singing, whilst they are technically singing from the same hymn sheet, some are more fluent in English than others, and uh, and are able to interpret it better or, or worse uh, than others there's just this is one of the biggest issues with firearms licensing departments up and down the country consistency every single time consistency that's all we want um you know it's almost a, a, a quick it's almost a thing of be careful what you wish for uh because it's like they could all be consistently horrendous and really badly into all it really and badly interpret the guidance but at least we know what rules we're playing with here, you know, because yes, you can go online and you can read the the Firearms Act. You can go and read the, the firearms guidance, right? It makes no difference. It makes absolutely no difference because it's down to the head of the firearms licensing department to interpret that and basically implement their, in, their, their interpretation. So... It's not what you understand or you or I understand the guidance or the firearms law as. It's what they do. And, you know, whilst they have these working groups, whilst they have these these meetings, there still seems to be gross inconsistencies of how they're, they're operated. You would think that, yes, it should be a national decision. Um, I just think that that says more about Hampshire. That says more about how, you know, they're willing to stick their neck out and head up um, to, to go, now we're not doing it anymore. It really shows where they sit amongst their, their peers, let's say, uh, of firearms licensing uh, departments.
James Dean, you need home visits. A lot can be hidden on Zoom. I do agree, although, you know, it's like everyone goes, yeah, yeah, well, you know, what if they've got, you know, worrying things in the home? And I'm like, well, to be honest, like anybody's going to take down their, you know, poster of a swastika, aren't they? You know, or, you know, their various copies of Mein Kampf. Like it's, yes, you can get a much better, in terms of the cleanliness, in terms of the, how, you know, up together the house is, who's living there, the, you know, the, there's things that you can't just quickly go around and, and fix. That is going to be a good in, in a good impression to the FEO. But, you know, people always go, oh, you know, they could have a little, you know, it could be like right now, I could have like a shrine to Hitler here, right? Um, but do you, like, am I going to leave that if somebody comes into the house to assess my suitability for firearms? You know, you're going to like shove it up in the attic or, you know, it's, it's this thought that, um, you know, by just going around somebody's house, they're going to find all what's wrong with them. Um, you know, usually the these sorts of people are very, you know, switched on, manipulative and they know what they're doing it's like they're not stupid enough to leave various artifacts that is going to bring questions uh, in the home so do i personally think it's absolutely essential for them to go into the home no there are benefits um i think the the biggest issue or the biggest benefit of of going and doing a home visit is checking the security measure uh, arrangements if you sit down and have a zoom call with somebody for half an hour 45 minutes an hour their personality is going to come out you know yes it's easier to to mask and hide things but it's still you're still going to get a good feel for the person no nobody can sort of keep up that that internet um charade for for that long although i've been doing very very well at it um just a good actor i guess um so they uh I do think they still need to go around the house, but as I said earlier, it doesn't need to be the full hour, hour and a half. They can do the interview uh, on, you know, and, and tick all the boxes through a, um, you know, a virtual interview, and then anything else that they may need to do in their assessment can be done in a much quicker visit. Again, helping to streamline things, um, you know, and. and it's sort of the proof is in the pudding because other counties were issuing firearms certificates and shotgun certificates with remote uh, interviews so it can be done it can be done without an effect to uh, public safety because uh, everyone well you know they were doing that and look Plymouth happened yet yeah, that he had a home visit like that didn't work out did it you know it's like out of the multitude of failings that happened uh, by Devon and Cornwall police allowing that person to have a gun actually the only one of the very few things they did right is actually go and visit the guy um and actually go and see the house so you know that doesn't always work and always yield what you want it to there you know you just have to listen to the altar the the other multiple red flags um that are out there And if they depart from statutory guidance without exceptional clear reasoning, they will open the process to judicial review. The antis would love that. Um, yeah. Um, potentially, I still think they, they can, given the circumstances, they can... Uh, what, what, is, what is it? It's the spirit. The police love using spirit of the law a lot of the time. The spirit of the guidance um you know in terms of assessing somebody again i'm not saying that necessarily you know they um they should just issue out certificates based on um virtual interviews but the fact that other firearms licensing departments have done that without any ill effects says it can be done but also why can't they still be doing the other umpteen different processes that they need to Uh, Daniel, um, good to see you. Oh, I saw your previous comment. Um, haven't received a card yet. I don't think I'll go and I'll go and check. Wait, you know where I live? <laughs> Run! Um, uh, but Daniel, my FEO in Gwent told me they would be doing renewals and inspections via Zoom calls with a follow-up once the pandemic is over. I have been waiting nine months for my inspection after moving. Um, so yeah, pretty much exactly what I was saying. Surely delaying applications and variations must be 
damaging the business of RFDs. Um, so what they're talking about is firearm and shotgun certificates. Oh, you, I, what do you mean like it's affecting them being able to operate or um, the fact that people can't go and buy buy guns? Because that that is actually something I hadn't thought about. Um, all of these new people, because it's the new people that buy the most guns, right? So, you know, RFDs is one of the reasons that if you're a registered firearms dealer, you can't be a reference for somebody's firearms application or shotgun application because that that is a bit of conflict of interest there isn't that you know I sell guns I'm going to help you get a certificate to buy guns and then you can come and buy more guns from me um, or you can start buying guns from me uh, but yeah absolutely people not being able to you know if you like how many new certificate holders are there every single year right and I think it's in the region of like five to ten thousand, um, something like that. You know, five to ten thousand people. What's that worth in? Actually, let's. I can bring up the the numbers. Um, what is it? Uh, firearms certificate stats. Let's bring this up, and then we can actually like put a a, f a rough figure on it um r like really rough like uh, this isn't going to be um this isn't going to be anything to quote <laughs> so well that's good as of the 31st of march 2021 um there was a two percent decrease in firearm certificate and a three percent decrease in shotgun certificates based on the on the previous year um now that's that's probably understandable because, again, they were finding it difficult to process applications and, and get them out there because of because of lockdown. I would have expected a, a de decrease. The new people weren't coming through. Let's see if we can find, let's see if we can find like 2019. I just want like a rough ballpark figure of like how many new certificates there are each year. So April 18 to March 19. Um, so 500 and I bring up like I've shown this loads of loads of times it's um it's it's the general you know Naf uh, office for national statistics who fun fact I did actually used to work for um so this says we're seeing a 0.8 increase um so 4000 so yeah I was pretty you know 5 5 to 10000 um it's always interesting if you literally type in firearm certificate stats on on google this is the sort of um um all the sort of stats that you get and as you can see usually um usually what well, we, we had any increase there so if we say about five thousand, right that's that's the number one let's let's just go that as a ballpark figure yes i could um spend the next half an hour getting a sort of a an average over the years of the increase, but if you say 5,000 new people to the sport, what is that worth to the firearms industry? Well, like everyone's gonna be a little bit different, um, but what's the average first spend on a shotgun? The average first spend, and I'm not talking just the gun because, well, first of all, you've got to buy a safe, you've got to buy a gun, you've got to buy cartridges, you've got to buy hearing um, and eye protection, a gun slip, gun oil, gun cleaning, kit uh i mean the first one i bought uh, my breath of silver pigeon all in all like a thousand carts i mean this probably tells you how long ago it was um a thousand cartridges the gun cleaning kit oil slip was there anything else i think i think that was just about it was about 1500 quid all in even if you say like 1500 quid is the average first gun spend um you know, then, then you know, five thousand times fifteen hundred. It's far too late to be doing that in my head. You're talking seven and a half million pound a year just in new gun purchases. Now, you know, is that the average? Does the average first person just buy one gun? Because, like, I didn't. <laughs> like when I first got my shotgun certificate, I, I bought the the silver pigeon. Uh, whilst I didn't buy any new guns, I don't think, I was buying second-hand guns from RFDs, 
Um, but within the f within the twelve month period of getting my shotgun certificate, um, or six months later, I got a firearm certificate. So I think in the first twelve months of having any certificate, included halfway through getting the firearm certificate, I'd bought um, a Beretta, the Beretta Silver Pigeon, uh, definitely a fifteen twenty two. I think even a Seiko Quad. Um, what what else what else then there's all the cartridges you know so you know my first year of shooting i probably spent in the region of like four thousand pound you know and and it's not just the rfds in terms of their business you're talking about the clubs you know the the revenue from clubs in in paying their fees membership fees in, in paying for the range fees for paying for competitions that you know clubs make profits or they should do if they run efficiently um which you know it all goes in the club and helps them build it's the clay grounds um all these businesses that um that benefit from new people into the sport so yeah i, I probably in the first 12 months of having certificates spent in the region or i would say three or four thousand pound is that is that average you know if that is that above or even below average but i, I would imagine let's let's even put a uh, say a figure of two to uh to three thousand pound as an average for uh for a first year uh, again i know there's going to be a lot of people going yeah i've never spent any more than 200 quid on a gun um but i've seen people that in their first year have spent 10 15 20 000 on the sport you know so so all in all if, if you say it's say three thousand in your first year and that's you know going that's going to a clay ground and paying for clays that's cartridges ammunition range fees um, you know uh, other memberships organizational memberships um you know that's worth 15 million pound a year how many rfds were there this is another thing that we can um oh that didn't work um well it's like another you know an average of 3.7 firearms were held on a firearm certificate so you know people in their first year probably do buy more than one or two guns uh where is certificate holders come on firearms dealers let's go So in two, this was as of March um, 2019, there were 3,408 registered firearms dealers. So if we're going to say rough ballpark figure, 15 million pound um, from new shooters alone divided by... See, this is all very, this is all very sensible, right? Um, I mean, it doesn't this isn't like the be all or end all the thing is like whilst there's you know 3400 registered firearms dealers um not all of those are going to be shops right there are going to be um rfds that are just in manufacturing that only sell their own products it's like um it's like you know i'm just trying to think of a really good example but they, they all benefit you know it's like um uh it's spartan um spartan refurbishment as daniel would uh, call them uh but spartan refinishing uh, is a cerakote now i think he does actually now sell guns but for for quite a long period had an rfd just to do cerakoting um it usually takes you a, a, a year or two to, to start spending money on cerakote um so we'll exclude that from the figures but basically total if you say 15 million pound um from just the new shooters coming into the sport that is worth um four and a half thousand pound per rfd doesn't sound like a huge amount but you know it's still four and a half thousand pound um and that's per year you know we've had a, a year where there was a decrease we've had we're probably gonna have another year where there's a, there's a decrease that is only going to get worse and worse for the dealers so you know just to answer your question damaging the businesses of rfds my finger in the air and twirl it about a bit figure is about four and a half thousand pound a year per rfd that that's what it seems to work out at. um 
you know, you, you could probably give it a lot of credit and say, you know, let, let's say that there's only like 2,000, like how many, oh, I, I, I want to know how many shops there were, how many, how many gun shops in, in the, uh, like physical brick and mortars because like even in this area in, in Hampshire right oh sorry let's just say the Portsmouth area there's only like say three or four there's four like gun shops in this immediate area like what you would say a, like an established gun shop um, you know and that's from basically from like Winchester, although I think there might be actually one in Winchester, but let's say the Winchester area to Chichester, there's like four main gun shops um, in, in that area. I, I know off the top of my head about a dozen RFDs that don't have shops just in that area alone. So, you know, it could be, a, uh, the new trade could be worth a hell of a lot more than the four and a half thousand. We, we could be looking more 10, 12,000 pound a year for a shop. Um, you know that that could start making the difference um that could be the difference of you know taking on a new apprentice you know which again has another uh, um knock on effect to to the industry callum there's no mps on a uh, policing board as they are in as oh callum is there no mps on a policying board as there is in Northern Ireland. That's how my FAC got processed via um, via a MLA due to over seven months wait. Um, not that I'm aware. I don't believe there's any sort of working group or panel or a board where the firearms licensing department will sit with an MP or the MP will be able to apply pressure basically. Um, I, I might be wrong on that. I know that there are um, MPs. I think it's Simon Hart, uh, MP, big, uh, big into his shooting, big into his his country sports and things like that. And he, I've seen him at a number of shooting talks. So he was at the World Gun Makers uh, evening a couple of years ago uh, and did a speech there. He is, you know, he's not scared to put his neck out on the line i don't actually know where he where his constituent constituency is but it's like a heavily countryside area it's like a, a real like guns are not an issue there like for the for his constituents william tell england and wales really need a single fac authority um it's so uh it's so resourced and consistent um so yes a singular authority absolutely a hundred percent i would back that a hundred percent i think it's is what we need you think about the additional costs every single firearms licensing department up and down the country having to run an office right and like now whilst they're normally within like police hq um buildings um you know, so is, is that actually an additional cost? But, you know, they all have to have computers. They've all got to have desks and chairs and extra bodies. Uh, so you'd be able to save so much of it or so much cost in having it in one central location. They would be able to massively reduce the budgets given, given uh, you know, cumulatively to firearms licensing departments. And we, would mo and we would certainly have consistency. If it was one department or one office, central hub doing it, at least it would all be to the same rules, wouldn't it? Uh, Truth Junkie, did you get the email with the link that I sent? I'm pretty sure I did. Um, I'm pretty sure I um, replied to you, but it might, might be in my flag, so I'll double check that uh, after the stream. Um, do you ever think they'll reissue your certificate? Um, and then Truth Junkie, not why he's doing this channel. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. At, at the point, I, I am literally at the point now where I don't really care. Uh, I've had, I've been in shooting sports longer without a certificate than with a certificate. And actually during the period of not having a certificate, um, I was able to um, help sort of start and grow uh, a shooting company 
Um, so yes, it's annoying. Yes, it really hinders being able to train for um, you know for the upcoming world shoots that I very much want to participate in. Yes, it causes no end of difficulties, um, you know, business wise and you know, from day to day running and um, you know sort of the interference of the business is has continuously been a, an issue. You know, even back um, when I was doing uh, Gunroom TV, not not having my own FAC, not, you know, being able to have an RFD even, um, is financially, does have financial implications on myself. Um, but whatever, throw whatever you want at me, don't, give me the certificate, don't give me the certificate, I really don't give a fuck, because I'm going to carry on doing what I've been doing for the last, um, well, five years now. Um, and the reason that I can continue doing what I'm doing is because I'm not breaking the law. So it's it's like you know if you th if I was some shady guy and I was going to do something you know heinous or I was up to no good, don't you think you would know about it now? It's it's been sort of long enough and I've had enough guns in my hands over this period um, that it's been okay. So you know, do I think I, I will eventually get them? Yes, there has to become a point where where even you know the the department um, you know Hampshire can't come up with enough bullshit to be able to to stop it. Um, do I think it's going to be anytime soon? I don't know. Maybe next year, but with COVID, it's, it's very, very unlikely. We'll have to see where that one goes. But yeah, it's just, you know, whatever at this point. You know, I've... The, the, channel, the channel has grown more over me having not a certificate than, than having a certificate. And I've I've been able to manage, um, although I'm still convinced that they're they're trying to, you know, they're going to try at some point to give me a criminal conviction so that I'm, you know, not um, uh, I'm then a prohibited person under you know section twenty one, but all the time I'm not. I can continue doing what I'm doing because again I'm not breaking the law. Uh, heard the news about the firearms officer shooting son-in-law. Yeah, I did hear about that. I did think about talking about it and bring it, bringing it on as a topic. I don't really know w what that gains. I mean, it, it does continuously demonstrate that the people that are um, meant to be policing and you know governing firearms within the UK um, are as equally as uh, untrustworthy as as anybody else. But uh, apart from that point I really don't know um, and actually um, oh it's just uh, it's just skipped is there any pol uh, politicians parties that are pro-gun um, no I mean well you kip I think UKIP actually had no UKIP didn't have in their manifesto. It was um, Nigel Farage actually came out. He was the leader of UKIP, came up and said um, about legalizing handguns again. Uh, I really think um, uh, you know at the end of the day he had at the time the very unpopular opinion of let's leave the European Union and was able to get that done. Uh, who's laughing now? So he's, you know, the the tackling a subject or um, a topic like sh guns and shooting and handguns. I think he would revel in in the the opportunity to overturn something like that equally as as Brexit. It's very very much a uphill struggle sort of thing, and 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 he seems to take on those those challenges in his stride. So. You know, I think he's quite a switched on logical guy and him himself personally believes that, um, you know, they should be legal, that they shouldn't have been banned, that we should have them still under Section 1. And, yeah, I think, you know, as he was, when he was the leader of UKIP, that that would have been something that he would have been able to tackle if he was to get into power. Um, obviously, UKIP are a, you know, shadow of what they what they used to be. Uh, but I mean, there's the Libertarian Party. Uh, they are 100% pro-gun. Uh, the the thing is, they they're a very very small niche party. Um, you know, I'm not saying that they wouldn't ever be able to get into power, but like in in terms of the parties that are likely to get into power, um, 
you know, Labour, Conservatives, Liberal Democrats, some people may even just laugh at that the, that last one. None of those will have guns in their manifesto. The only time guns or firearms would ever be mentioned in the manifesto is, you know, gun crime is, you know, restrictions for further law. So, so no, we don't really, we don't really have any pol again politicians. Yes, we do have pro gun uh, politicians, but in terms of parties, no. Nigel is great. No, I'm gonna to have to ban you. Verstappen won. Um, no, definitely, um, definitely not. No, he didn't win. It was given to him. <laughs> um, other topics. Well, it actually spawns off. Um, what about Callum's fiance, single friend? She's not single, unfortunately. Sorry to break all your hearts. Um, Callum, any news on Maglo magazines? I have have a very happy Christmas. Um, thanks, Matt. So cheers for joining. I've had a number of um, messages, comments, calls, emails about the Maglo magazines. Yes, Maglo is making a sort of a general 2-2 AR magazine that will be compatible with the likes of the 1522, Land Tax, Battle Arms, Chris Defiance, Titmans, um, what else? Like, yeah, like mil and like any CMMG build. So like the Aero Precisions, the L119 from Cotswold Classic Arms. Um, yeah, the, the, it, it is in development. Um, soon. Like, so many people are like, please pre-order them. Pre please put them out for pre-order. I want to get them. Um, we're so, so, so close. We had a... Bas basically, where we're at at the moment, the design has been tweaked. So, um, Connors has been designing the magazine and we've been having them printed. Um, we've got the final design of that done. Then it needs to be handed to the injection molders. They then need to make modifications for injection molding. Um, and then they will um, send, so we're at that stage at the moment, and they've made their changes, this is what we would like it to be like, to make it as easy as, uh, to make it as easy as possible to injection mould, um, and then we've had that design printed and gone to test it, unfortunately they actually absolutely butchered it, so we're going to have to go back to them and go, no, 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 these really need to be like, like this geometry really needs to be like this, they will then there will be a bit of back and forth. we we'll hopefully agree another design. That will then need to get printed. Once that once that stage is done, to, to finish that stage, basically a design that they're happy with, the design that we're happy with, as in it works, um, then we will tell them, yes, go go for it. We will then get a single, uh, we'll get the first molds off or the first um, parts off. They will be sent to us, we will double check those and test those quite heavily and then they will do the full run um so from the moment that we say do the full run we're looking at about four to six weeks and we've probably got another probably three or four weeks of backwards and forth and and, and testing to do um so we were really hoping before christmas to have these um it's just it's taken a lot longer, so we're, we're now hoping to be able to start having the first ones off of the machine, the first production ones off of the machine, end of January, but it could be February, but depending how it goes, it could be March, like, it's really hard, we we hate giving timescales on these things, we can tell you at, at this point in time, we think it, it should be here by the, you know, in February, um, but we're not going to rush it, we're not going to uh, jump the gun it needs to be right bef before we um before we put it to market and that includes opening up for pre-orders what we do not want is a nightmare scenario like, at, at the end of the day we still haven't an, had uh, an injection molded part off of a machine yet so whilst i'm incredibly confident that we will have a um a working magazine it's v it's what we don't want to do is take a load of people's money and then it be another six months or be another 12 months like that's very unlikely 
but but it's not out of the realms of possibility. The absolute worst case is that it, for some reason the injection molders are like, no, you can't have it like that, and we're like, well, it doesn't work with it with it with it like that. And and then it's like, well, then we're at stalemate, mate. If we end up having you know a few hundred thousand pre-orders, then we're gonna have to give all that money back. So we are we're still very much working with it. It will be coming very very soon. Um, I promise you. Um, but yeah, it's Tom Elloway, not until the summer, basically. I really hope not. Um, I really, really hope not. It's uh, It should be a lot earlier than that. Um, in terms of other topics, so back on to the main topic of Hampshire Firearms Licensing de deciding that they want um, a uh, an extended... Uh, Christmas leave uh, this ties into it as well which is where I think their decision to do this has come from it or has been inspired from it uh, so this is whilst you're going to see this guy's name I don't usually like doing this but I didn't have time to blur him out this is a completely public group so if he doesn't want to be out there online then he shouldn't be posting in a public group um, so this was in a, a group i'm not actually in this group i still am, it's, as you can see it's a public group country stride capers um or capers or whatever it is um my wife who is a gp has been instruction instructed to stop all shotgun slash firearm reports until the end of january this is to free up time to deal with the current variant i'm not sure about implications or uh, immediate or uh, imminent renewals or grants but there will be no doctor's reports until at least february now this is what sort of makes hampshire's statement just sort of a more more bullshittery if this statement is true and you know of course everything on facebook is um is is truthful um and you should believe it 100 percent. but if it is true that this that gps have been instructed to stop doing uh, doctor's reports why didn't hampshire go with that line and, and i'll give a counter to that in a second but like instead of oh because of the new variant and helping you know the nhs and all that why don't they just look up and say the gps have been told um well i, I can understand because it my retort to this my retort to all of this is this shouldn't stop the issue of certificates right and you might be thinking well well why you need a GP certificate, right? You need a, a GP form signing you off and saying that you don't have any history of mental health issues. The reason that that shouldn't stop the, the processing or issuing of certificates is because you don't need to go to your GP. Uh, there are a number of private companies that will do that form for you for a fee. Um, the, the first one, I'll bring them both up so that you're aware of it so that if your local firearms licensing department brings this up um you can go well you know oh you know we we can't price it there and this is probably why hampshire haven't taken that tack and they've taken a more oh you know we 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 just want to stop the spread and um you know not put people on risk and help and support the nhs um because it's easy to uh s sort of counter uh the department shutting down because you can't get gp forms um, so first of all, uh, I'll get both of them up. So, oh, it's called a different name now. Um, so the first one is MediCert. This seems to be the most popular. This is what um, I think the majority of people seem to work, uh, seem to use this is uh, so you know interestingly in terms of um, data protection and your rights in terms of your data the the gp whilst they can shut up shop and not issue you a, a gp medical form to, for your application they can't refuse to send your medical records to somebody because of covid right they still have to do that so what these companies do is they are uh, registered doctors uh, there's there's still you know or even gps and 
it's it's a private business for them, right? So they are qualified in, a, in in order to sign a GP form. They request your medical record from your GP. It gets sent to them. Uh, you can actually uh, request your medical um, data again because of because of freedom of information and GDPR and all that. You can request for your medical history at, at, at any point at any time, and you can give it to them, or they can request it, and and so on and so forth. And then they do the form for you. So this is a private company. There's also another one. I I thought it was called Shotgun Medicals, um, but now it's called Firearm Medical Reports. Co.uk. Maybe maybe they've just sort of taken the other name. Another um, an, another private company that will do the form for you. So you know, whilst it might be doom and gloom that they you know. GPs are seemingly being told to to stop doing uh, reports for firearm or shotgun applications. It's not the end of the world. And and again, if any of your firearms licensing departments use this specifically as an excuse of why they're not processing applications, just tell them, well, what about MediCert? You can't get away with that that easily. There's still other options uh, available. So unfortunately, once again, we're sort of between a rock and a hard place. Obviously, the the government really want this push on the boosters. They really want people... Uh, you know they're, they're throwing the kitchen sink at it li- like literally trying to get everybody with their booster shots so you know if it really is that important it's, it's sort of hard to say now they the gps shouldn't be doing this they should you know they should be processing my um my medical form uh you know that might you know be a little bit selfish in, in some ways but why this all harks back to the issues that basque brought up about you know there was an agreement for GPs to do this that like GPs almost have a stranglehold on it you need to go to them they need to sign it off in order to be you know in order to um you know have your application process to be signed off to to, to have that GP form personally the GPs mostly can't be fucked I know so many people seem to have uh, good experiences with them but they seem to be majorly outweighed by the bad ones GPs wanting to charge two three hundred pound GPs just turning around and saying no I don't want anything to do with firearms you know sling your hook um fuck them right <laughs> like uh, I know I don't want to I don't want to plaster them all the same but the you know fuck it the bad ones can spoil it for uh the, the good ones for all I I care let's remove GPs out of it and why not just have MediCert? You know, why don't they switch to Medi- MediCert? You know, yes, it's a private company. Yes, it's, uh, you know, somebody's making money out of it where some people currently, their GPs will do it for free. But it's it's really like this, you know, it, it's like the... It's the it's the differential. So the people that are really happy because their GPs are will do it for free. The where where maybe the bar should be, and where people are that are really unhappy. It's like the people that are really unhappy and get really shafted get disproportionately shafted. Um, you know, compared to how unshafted other people are. That that sort of makes sense if you, if, if if you understand. Hopefully you do. Um, it, it's sort of like we need to balance it somehow. And and yes, it's you know using somewhere like MediCert or Shotgun Medicals or Firearms Medicals or whatever they're called now um, isn't is going to be a step back for some people. I think it's going to be a massive step forward uh, for others. It removes the political nature of the GP. It removes a GP being able to get onto their you know political high horse and conscientiously object. Uh, you know, it, it just removes all of that bullshit. It's go to shotgun medical, or you know, we we, we have two or three, and there's competition because competition encourages good service. That's what that's what they should do. If if they're never going to have a like a central firearms licensing hub, if they're never going to centralise it and and combine all of these different departments. You should be able to apply in a different county right that would really spice things up if if another county is more efficient and can actually make money from it as a department to put back into policing and they're you know a joy to deal with 
people are just going to go there. You know, I mean, that's probably still going to suit Hampshire down to the ground, but it, you know, why can't, you know, go to a different county? You know, pay, may, or, like, fuck it. I would pay, I would happily pay an additional fee for another FEO from another county to come down. I might actually get a fair and impartial assessment of my suitability then. But, you know, they, why, like, why? Why can't we have, you know, they charge an extra, make some more money from me. Anyway, I think, sack off the um, the GPs. I think the general consensus is that they don't want anything to do with this. They see it, as, you know, as a laborious add-on that they, you know, they, they can be making far more money doing other things than, you know, putting their neck on the line, ticking somebody off for a firearm certificate. Just go to Shotgun Medicals, um, you know, Shotgun Medicals or MediCert and just buy, bypass the GP completely. Um, Tony Victor, that's that's exactly what I was talking about in terms of Basque and, and all that. Um, there was an agreement between the Home Office um, and the General Medical Council, is it General Medical Council, um, years ago. Trouble was the GMC didn't ask the GPs who then threw their stethico, stethic, you know, threw their toys out the pram. Why can't you just write that? I can, I can say that. Um, stethos, stethoscopes. Is that, is that how you say it? It's far too late to be pronouncing words. Um, uh, yeah, that's basically what they did, uh, unfortunately. So, you know, they basically reneged on the agreement. You know, oh, yeah, we're speaking for all GPs. Have you actually spoken to them? No, no, but we're speaking for them. They'll be fine. They'll be completely chill. So, yeah, just cut them out. Have you ever considered a holiday in Andorra? because it has the most prevalent and relaxed gun culture in Europe outside of Switzerland and Monaco. Is Andorra the one where it's legally required for the male of the household to have a firearm? And is Andorra also, I'm pretty, maybe it's a an error or, or a blip on um, the, the website that I saw it on, but I'm pretty sure Andorra had like one of the highest firearms ownership rates of like any other country. It was actually a requirement to have a gun in the house and there was like not a single death like there was no murder i don't know maybe that was all just very wrong um but that seems to ring a bear uh, a bell um to, to be honest if i'm going to go somewhere if i'm going to travel somewhere specifically to go shooting um like for, first of all if, if i'm going to go for say a cheap visit it's either going to be nitsa because that's really you can do that as a as a day trip um, go out to Northern Ireland, shoot some handguns, like, you know, and, and maybe even some semi-auto full balls. Uh, otherwise, Prague, going out to Prague, because again, they have um, handguns, they have semi-auto full ball rifles. So those are sort of the cheap trips, fairly quick and easy to get to, fairly relaxed laws, been there before, so sort of know my way around. But if I'm going to go specifically for a shooting holiday, not just a weekend or a long weekend, it's America, right? Like, there's no better place in the world to go for a shooting holiday. And it's not just the gun laws, right? It's not just the gun laws. It's the gun culture as well. And I've never been to Switzerland, uh, so I can't really say as a comparison, but it's just how... Like, the Americans, that they want you to have a gun in your hand, right? That That's like, it's not like, oh, yeah, we're allowed these. And, oh, yes, you're more than welcome to come to the range. And, yes, we're, we're doing... They're like, you know, if, if you're a gun guy and you go out to America and a, an American gun guy see, you know, finds out that you're a gun... They're like, they just start pulling guns out from everywhere. I've, there's, like, no word of a lie. I, I've said before, went out to Roswell for work got in contact with a local club like a private members club the chairman ended up taking a day off of work emptied him his and his son's safe drove me out to the range um we had the whole range to ourselves and he must have had like i don't know 20 or 30 guns i'll, I'll see if i can um get a picture of it 
and it's like he literally couldn't do more for me and that's not like the only experience that i've i've had the the offers like i've you know i have been offered to like go out to germany um switzerland netherlands loads of european countries and and the offers are, are always you know very like humbling and, and i'm always very very appreciative but the level of offers that i've had um don't compare to the, the offers from america right i've had people say you can come and stay at my home for a, an entire week or two like as long as you want right um you know there's people that you know they, they've they've said you know i'll take you to the range um you know it's like an ammunition company's Kellaway ballistics you know we we'll get any class three gun you want you can put as many rounds down range just come and have a good time um you know if you need a place to stay let us know it, it's just like it's absolutely unbelievable the um the hospitality and the the friendliness uh in america and i just highly recommend anybody going unfortunately i don't have these on the computer so i can't um i can't like bring them up there but this was you're gonna go oh is that it um this was one table of of pistols from my my trip in uh so that roswell so he just pulled like all of those out um so that was one one table full where else there's there's more plethora photos i think it was such unfortunately such a long time ago But there must have been like four or five tables like that of guns that they just like absolutely emptied their safe. Oh, here we go. You can see a few more there. I mean that like it was funny. He pulled pulled out. I think that was either a five hundred or an eight set or a eight seventy, and I was like, that's one of the very few things that I can actually. Um, I can actually shoot in the UK or better better angle. So some more more pistols, more um more shooty shoots. I think the the some of these might be duplicates, but that was another case that they brought out. This is just literally just emptied out is safe. Um an AR. Just another gun. Tommy and more pistols. This this don't get excited. This was only uh, a semi-auto, but still one one hell of a a great rifle. Um, and just for comparison, like another reason you should go uh, to America and shoot it is because if you go f with American shooting trips, you get to see tables like that um so yeah any, anyway like i just cannot recommend going to america to shoot enough like the americans will bend over backwards to get you shooting um and also you can go with american shooting trips which which i highly recommend There's no better place that isn't an authoritarian Islamic state anyway. Yemen makes USA look restrictive, but obviously that's not an option. <laughs> um, yeah, like, again, America, the, the other reason you'd go out to America for shooting, not just the hospitality in terms of the guns and, and the laws and the accessibility and the number of guns out there, um, it's also it's a really cool place to visit. Some people strongly disagree, but... You know, you can get any climate out in the States. You know, you can go skiing on some of the best slopes. You can, you know, find the hottest deserts. Uh, you can find, like, the best driving roads. You can also find the worst dead straight fucking driving roads. But, so like, so many different cultures and terrains and topology. Um, and American food just happens to be one of my favorite foods. Meat. Just barbecue in general. Milkshakes, chicken wings. Ah. Um, yeah, can't wait to go back. It's just like i it's the best place it's the best place to go shooting because 
you know you just after the off the range you sit there with a you know big like hog barbecue you know just firing at 10 cans it's brilliant <laughs> you've got a real purity mouth boy yes I, I have to say you know whilst it's always appreciative um receiving these offers and invites there are some that i feel have some unsaid strings attached to them um i mean i still need to click uh, tick off a glock 18 off of my bucket list the longer it goes without shooting that gun the more i'm willing to facilitate that gun being fired by myself um yes apply here shame you have to get double jab to get into america now i'm not going to get into vaccines and jabbing and, and all that all i will say is that i shouldn't have a problem what's the crack with 300 blackout in the u.s at the moment apparently it's the caliber everybody is buying now in the uk as well like people seem to be really hot on um 300 blackout I think it's the the fact that it's so quiet, um, but it also packs a reasonable punch. Um, so it's it's sort of like the best of both worlds caliber from what people want, and and also it it just sounds cool, you know, like a three oh one a three oh eight Winchester, mm -hmm. three hundred blackout, like it just it sounds like a cool. Um, like a 50 bmg like you don't even need to be a into shooting to, to understand that that just sounds fucking cool um you know like the you know having a 50 bmg and a 300 black it just like oh just sounds good um and i th i think there's genuinely like 6.5 creed more i i think the 6.5 creed more circle jerkers tried to do the same thing with that like oh 6.6 6.5 6 creed more say that to me again daddy it, it was like they tried to do it no like now when somebody says 6.6.5 6 creed more i i think of somebody with a clipboard ticking off various specifications of you know loading powder um whilst with one hand and and with the other hand playing a game of soggy biscuit like that's the sort of image 6.5 creedmoor conjures up to me it's not a sexy name like creedmoor it just no blackout creedmoor like blackout is the sort of round that would bully a 6.5 creedmoor like that's you know i i have these thoughts i generally do it just my head will my head will drifts this is why i cannot be left alone and whilst i must always have my mind entertained because it, it, it will just stray into very very odd places um the penultimate ninja i use 300 blackout for home defense it's pretty much ideal for that purpose yeah so you know, again like probably why it's so popular out in the us and not here is because you know they can buy guns for self-defense It's just like smoking. You all know it's bad for you, but at the same time, you all know <laughs> that smoking is just so fucking cool. Uh, no, vaping. Vaping's where it's at. <laughs> 300 Blackout uses pistol powders and that maintains velocity with a shorter barrel length. The Glock 18 runs out of ammo quick. That's why you need a 100 round beta mag. That that is my dream. That that, that so that on my bucket list, there's shooting a Glock eighteen, but there's also shooting dual wielding two or dual wielding Glock eighteens with a hundred round beta mags. That's that's just the dream. That's that's just the pinnacle. You can't, you know, or you know, maybe like strapped into a helicopter, you know, maybe you can, you know, or out the sunroof of like. You know a ferrari that's i think the, that's the only way like i don't think you can add more gun to that scenario to make it cool maybe some suppressors and some traces okay all right we can we can work on this scenario but that's that's pretty much my ideal dual wielding glock 18s 
with both with 100 round beta mags. Just. Mm. Uh, M. Gabriel, you are welcome here in Missouri. Uh, and that is a banjo. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Callum has naked pictures of 300 blackout on his phone. Um, that's not all. 50, 50 BMG in a 12 gauge shotgun. Um, it has to be tried at some point. I mean, I'm not saying I'm volunteering, but it has to be tried. Anyway, guys, as I said, um, I do I do actually have technically a guest over, although it is my uh, my partner's uh, friend, but they are a mutual friend as well. Uh, and it is getting close to Christmas, so don't we all deserve a break? Uh, on on that, in terms of deserving a break, it has been a, a, like a couple of months until I uh, since I put out a dedicated video. I know I keep saying it. Um, this week I actually have some time off. Don't have anything planned. Um, actually, tomorrow I will be sat down filming videos. I have, I have two match videos to to edit and get out. Um, top ten or top five most ex expensive guns sold at auction. I'm doing a whole dedicated video on this whole Hampshire thing. I know we've pretty much done it, but I want to make it a bit more concise, and it will be the whole GP thing and as well. So um, that will be another video. Um, I'm doing about a state safe installation, so you can see the safe. Well, actually, I've got in the way the, the safe over my left shoulder there. Um, that's not actually fixed in place. Doesn't need to be. Hasn't got anything in it. Uh, so, and and also, I don't think I'm like. Well, I don't know. I I don't know what the ins and outs are showing installing that safe. At the end of the day, you don't know where this room is. Um, you don't even know which built but like where I am um, I'm making sure not to get that my, my address out there um, this time um, or dox myself so so yeah I, I feel comfortable because pretty much the guns are, are most likely going to be stored elsewhere if when I get my FAC so showing the installation of a safe which is something I've never done that's coming out talking about um, traveling with guns as well after the the recent break-in so my point is there's a lot of videos to come um, actually yeah I know very sad Christmas Eve gonna be sat here filming but literally that's like the only day of the year at the moment that I seem to have to film so we'll be um, we'll be coming out with some videos very sh shortly um, and we'll be doing the stream as normal uh, next Thursday so it'll be like a end of year review uh, perhaps uh, but yeah a very very Merry Chris Christmas to everybody watching everybody that's watching now like subscribe don't forget to like and subscribe like because it, it makes me happy um but yeah everyone that supports the channel in any way those that have supported the channel uh tonight with your um donations really do uh, appreciate it and a very merry harry very merry her, her. see this is why i need to go um a very merry christmas uh, to you all i'll save the happy new year because we'll do that next week but uh, again thanks for joining everyone i hope you've enjoyed it merry christmas i wish you a happy new year next week um and of course as always hope to see you soon <laughs>